Ian Boone from SENICT here with some simple instructions on how to use guided access. First thing we need to do is turn it on. So touch the settings, scroll up until we find accessibility, scroll up until we find guided access. We need to set a couple of things in the menu before we use it. First thing is we need to make sure we turn it on. This is the on and off switch here. Make sure you've got it turned on. Next thing we need to do is set a passcode. That's a simple code that you can remember that we don't tell the children. Passcode can be anything. Um, I'm going to use the numbers 1111. It'll ask me to put it in again. And that's set up. If you're using a newer iPad that has a Touch ID facility, you can use your fingerprints for this. We probably wouldn't recommend that in school, especially if iPads are going to be passed around between colleagues. One useful feature in Guided Access is the ability to set time limits. This could be useful, for example, where you had a student who might find difficulty sharing or perhaps gets a little too absorbed with the iPad. To set a time limit, you need to first set what happens when the time runs out. So if I touch time limits, I've got two choices here. Uh, one of them is the sound that's played, and I'm going to choose the popcorn sound. I'll go back. The second option here is speak, and it's a bit of an odd one. I haven't really managed to make it say anything. By turning it on, what seems to happen is that the student will get a notification as the time is beginning to run out, so perhaps 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds before the time finally runs out. You can choose to use that or not. Uh, once you've set that up, the last thing I'm going to set up is the accessibility shortcut. That's this switch here. The reason I do this is because I use more than one accessibility feature. For example, I use guided access and switch control. If you're only using guided access, you don't need to turn this on at all. If you do turn it on, the iPad will automatically save the accessibility features that you've set up in the guide, the accessibility shortcut menu. So everything's fine. When you're done with that, we can come out of there and out of the settings and look at how it works within an app. So let's look at guided access running in an app. I'm going to run my favorite communication app, Talking Ginger. To turn guided access on, we triple click the home button one, two, three. And you can see from the menu that Guided Access has been turned on. To get into Guided Access, I do that again. And it will bring up the passcode. I'm going to enter my passcode, 1111, and that will take me to the Guided Access screen. At the bottom of the screen, you can see I've got three options. The first of which is the hardware buttons. You can see there that I can turn off or turn on some of the features that relate to buttons on the iPad. By default, Guided Access turns off the Home button, the Off button, um, but you can also turn on and off buttons like the Volume button or the Sleep Wake, the On Off button essentially for the iPad. You can also turn off Motion. That's really useful where we've got a student who might struggle to hold the iPad still. Turning off motion stops the iPad screen from turning round when it's tilted. That can also be useful when we turn off areas of the screen, which I'll show you in a second. You can also turn off keyboards. That's, that's when the app might require some typed input. Most of the apps, certainly the apps we use in school uh, with some of our students, wouldn't need typed input. So I'm going to turn that off as well. I'm turning off the volume buttons and the sleep-wake button. The second setting in the, in the center here is the touch setting. If I turn this off, it essentially turns off touching on the whole screen. Um, that can be really useful where perhaps we're giving the student the iPad to watch a short video clip or maybe a little presentation or something. And we actually don't want them to touch any of it at all. I'm going to turn it back on. The final option I've got down here is the time limit. That allows me to set a time limit for how long the student can use the app before it will lock the iPad up and require somebody to put in the passcode. I'm going to set that for a minute. There's one final feature that we can do with guided access and that is to lock out certain areas of the screen. And we do that simply by drawing around them. 
So I'm going to draw around the advertisement at the top of the screen with my finger. And you can see that's created a small grey box, which I'm then going to resize and position over that advertisement. I'm also going to draw another box to get rid of these buttons here. Um, th that essentially turns off that particular part of the screen, the top of the screen. So it's important if we're going to use this to make sure that the screen can't be rotated. And that means turning off motion here. When you're happy with everything that you've done, press resume and the app will start with your settings. If the student makes any attempt to get out of the app, this is what will happen. A message will be displayed briefly at the top of the screen. Um, however, if they do keep pressing the home button, it will bring up the passcode setting, at which point they'll no doubt put in the wrong passcode and that will block them out for a short period of time. If they continue doing that, then they'll be locked out. So if we wait a minute, you'll see what happens. OK, and the minute's almost up now. And you can see the screen has changed to time expired. Now, no matter what I press on the iPad, nothing will happen. I can't turn it off. I can't fiddle with the volume buttons. And the home button certainly won't work. The only way to get away from this screen is to triple click the home button and type in the passcode. If I type in an incorrect passcode, what will happen, as you can see at the top of the screen, is the student is now locked out from attempting to enter another passcode for 10 seconds. If they continue to enter incorrect passcodes, that time period will be extended up to one minute. If you want to get back into, into the settings, put in the correct code. And that's about all there is to it. When you've finished using Guided Access, touch the End button at the top of the screen to go back to using normal iPad. I hope you found that useful. Thanks very much for watching.